in Athens for the first time because of the need that the assembly of the citizens had to be gathered and to gather in a certain uh, periodical and not periodical way. So at least four times per month they had to be gathered somewhere to sit down and to discuss all the problems of the state. And uh, the closest to the city flat area for these gatherings was the cemetery. And so they moved the cemetery on the side, taking away the above ground burial monuments without disturbing the graves underneath. And they formed this empty space, the square, which became the center of the public life of the city. This is how the Agora starts. The Agora starts because democracy had to be expressed. Democracy had to function. Monarchy was up there, the Acropolis. Oligarchy on Mars Hill. And the Agora was in that flat area because many, many persons uh, we are participating now in the decision making. At the beginning, we have only here some buildings, all of the rest was empty. And that was the square. Now, the buildings we had here were some temples, a religious section of the Agora, some administrative buildings and the court of justice for cases lesser than homicide. Homicide was always judged upon masculine. Uh, <coughs> Later we have buildings like this with the colonnades like this one there. These buildings, the porch buildings, yeah, in Greek are called stoa, stoa. Greeks had a certain philosophy about their home. Greeks consider home nature, and all their activity was outdoors. All ancient Greek houses had a yard called Atrium. And that was the epicenter of the family activity. They used the rooms of the house only if that was necessary. And the yard of the big family, the city, was this. The Agora, the square. But here, the weather is changeable. And in many cases, the weather conditions didn't allow them to accomplish their public activity outdoors and for that reason they built the stoa. The stoa is a long building <coughs> which has at least one long side open with a colonnade. Sometimes both the long sides were colonnades. So a person entered to uh, uh, entering to the stoa was protected because of the roof of the stoa, but was feeling still outdoors. Still out. That was important for the Greeks. Later, Romans came. Although they were conquerors, they tried to present themselves benefactors. They decided to replace the old Greek stoa by new buildings public buildings for the same purpose, but they had a different philosophy. Basilica is a similar long and big building like the Stoa, but is closed all around. And when you enter to the Basilica, the Roman Basilica, you are indoors and you are not outdoors anymore. So we have the Stoa. 
the Romans came, they built this building here and this, and so the square during the Roman time was not that big. Later, the things changed. Christianity came. All these old practices were forgotten, and this area here was totally inhabited. And that until 1893. Here behind me, until 1893, we was a very big and vital uh, neighborhood of Athens. From the ancient uh, sources, was known that there, at this location, was the Agora, but was buried under the houses. <coughs> this is the time when uh, foreigner archaeological schools decided to come in Greece to discover the classical past. Because the only place they could find classical remains was Greece. The American Archaeological School came here and made a request to dig the Athenian Agora, which was so important not only for the city of Athens or the Greeks, but for the world culture. Because on the Athenian democracy, which was born to this square, is based all the Western culture. And they bought and demolished more than 1,400 houses and a lot of churches. The place was clear and the classical level appeared. How, how far down did they dig to find this? Do you know? Here we are on uh, the modern ground level. This is the level. Look at these houses. We're houses like this all over the ground. Okay. Now, almost 15 years before the Greek state had decided to connect the city of Athens with the port of Piraeus, with a railway. And a Scottish uh, company came here yeah, to build that railway. And this is the railway, which cut the Agora of Athens in the middle. Because they were not excavations, they didn't where they were placing the railway. And so today we have houses, the railway, and a part, a considerable part, a part of the Athenian Agora. Now, from antiquity was a building which never was destroyed because during the centuries was turned into a church, was turned into a mosque, and was almost in full shape all the time. And is this temple, the temple we saw from the Acropolis, and I told you this is the temple of the god of the blacksmiths, fifth century before Christ. Uh, the same time of the Acropolis buildings. Yeah, a building that definitely Apostle Paul saw been already for six centuries there. The other building that Apostle Paul saw from antiquity is this long building there, which is this. These two buildings border the Agora. The Agora is between this building and the building which is behind these trees there, this uh, temple. This building is a stoa of the second century before Christ and is a monumental gift to the city of Athens by a Pergamian king, the King Atalos II, who studied in Athens. And that was a sign, a gift of gratitude to the city that gave to him culture. We are going, <coughs> we, are, we are somewhere here. 
the railway goes like this. Now we are going to see this section here. And we are going to end at the Stoa. Now today we have spoken for two very special fields of the cultural life. We have spoken for the religion and mythology, which serves like for the Christians the Bible, and we spoke also for politics, for uh, monarchy, oligarchy, democracy. The only thing we have not uh, mentioned yet is philosophy, is the, the way of thinking. This place here, this square here, is considered to be the most important place of all the Western culture for three reasons. First of all, democracy is born here. The concept of democracy and the best expression of democracy, the direct democracy. Second, the Western thought was formed here as a result of democracy. This square became the place of activity of the most famous philosophers of history. Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, and many others passed their life in this square. And the third is that in this square, Apostle Paul met the Athenian philosophers of his time, bringing the message of the gospel in a direct contact with the Western thought. Before he was invited up here, yeah, to Mars Hill. We are going to speak mostly about the formation of the Western thought, which also happened in this square. Definitely, I'm going to point out to you very important monuments related with the political system of Athens. We are not going to speak so much about religion anymore, but our emphasis is going to be at the formation of the Western thought, who Socrates was who Plato was, who Aristotle was, and what is their contribution to our life today. Okay, is there any question up to this point? We continue.